Well, Church, great to be with you today online, Boxing Day 2021. We've got a great service in store for you. We're about to go into worship, but allow me to pray for you. Get get organized, get seated, um, expect God to minister to you today. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you for this great day, this great year, as we reflect on all the things that you've done for us, all the things that you've got ahead for us as we dream about those, Lord. I just pray that, again, that we will be people who have a spirit of thanksgiving. Uh, no matter what the circumstances, again, that we can we can see and understand how you're working behind the scenes. We pray that today will be a great blessing for many people in your strong and powerful name. Well, I've got this beautiful team on the couch with me today. Why don't you guys say hello to our church? Yeah, welcome. Welcome. All the campus pastors from all of our locations. Well done. Thank you. Getting them all here in one place, in one time, uh, uh, you know, is, is no mean feat, I can tell you. So well done to you guys. Um, we're going to go into praise and worship. So again, let's enjoy God's presence. Bless you guys.
My great honor to lead us this morning around our communion. If you'd like to get your emblems ready, I'd like to just share a couple of scriptures from John chapter 6. I want to pick it up starting from verse 32. Jesus has just prior to this moment uh, fed the, the multitudes with a couple of loaves of bread and uh, the miracle of a couple of fish and, and you know, it's outstanding what's happened there. It's the next day or so, Jesus has left that place and the crowds have followed him uh, because of that outstanding miracle. They, they you know, they're starting to come, come after him. And uh, he's having a conversation with them and he begins to speak to them and they're asking him some questions and they're saying that, well, you know, Moses, gave us bread in the desert, do the same thing for us. They're looking for their physical needs to be met. They're saying, hey, this rabbi, this great teacher of Israel, uh, supposedly this miracle worker, he's going to be like the new Moses to us. And he's going to feed, he's going to take care of us in the midst of so the, you know, our sustenance as it were. So Jesus has this conversation with them. I'm going to pick it up in verse 32 of John 6. He says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Continuing on, he says, Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread also. Verse 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. I think this is uh, so, so outstanding. Jesus is encouraging these people. Hey, listen, in coming to him, in coming to God, in coming to the things of faith, 
we must look beyond simply uh, God uh, attending to our natural needs. Now, there's nothing wrong, of course. God blesses us and, and, and you know, being in faith, we walk with the Lord and there's provision in, in all of that. But Jesus is inviting, as it were, this crowd, and I believe us this morning in communion, into something much deeper than just simply getting our needs met. He's actually saying, hey, what's on offer with me in communion with my spirit, in communion, in the, 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 the uh, remembrance of what happens in communion is that God invites us deeper, not just to get our physical needs met, but something much deeper. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the Father's bread that has come down from heaven. When you think about bread, you think about natural sustenance. Well, think about that from a spiritual sustenance perspective. In our faith, continually, communion, I believe, communion invites us to re-engage again or to reconsider the depths of God in our lives. It invites us to go, oh, Jesus, I need, like, just like I need food every day and I need bread every day, Lord, I need this common union with you. I, I need to feed it. I need to engage with it. I need to engage with you daily that I might have the fullness of all that you've had. You know, wherever you are right now, whatever season you're in, can I just encourage you, however it is that you, whatever your practice is, as far as feeding on the goodness of God and the goodness of Jesus daily, maybe it's a worship time. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a time of reading the word at, uh, morning or evening or during the day in your lunch break, whatever it is that this thought of feeding feasting on the Lord, thinking about the Lord and just inviting God into every space in our life. Let me pray before we receive our communion this morning. Father, we thank you that you are the bread of life to us. You are sustenance. Lord, you're more than just the God that meets our natural needs. You do that, Lord. You're a good, good Father. But Lord, you invite us into a deeper life than that, into a deeper engagement with you. Lord, you are daily bread for us, God, not just once in a while, not just once in a week, but you are daily bread for us. And Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, great to be with you, church. Boxing Day. Um, we've been doing something very different. We've never done this before where all of our uh, services are online and we're not in lockdown. Um, that makes a very unique scenario. And so all of our campus pastors, we've gathered here today and we're going to share about the highlights of 2021. So Chris and Beth, um, tell us all about what you thought was the really the great standouts. I know there's many standouts, but it'd be great if both of you could actually just share what the um, what the thing that really touched you personally this year in 2021. What a great year it's been. It's been a challenging year as well, of course, with, you know, all of our, the lockdowns and stuff. But for me, I might be the same for everyone else here, but for me, the first Sunday back out of lockdown, you know, we're not an events-based church at Hope You See, but we, we're a table-based church. And so when we all get to come back together around tables in our services, my heart was exploding that day, not just to be able to preach or anything like that, but to just be together in the room on the other side of an incredible challenge that our whole nation and our world's faced recently. And I was just in, I was so encouraged to see all of your faces and to be in the room with you and to just celebrate that moment. That was my highlight. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What about for you, Beth? What, yeah. what did you enjoy about this year? Oh, there's so many amazing things. It's hard to kind of pick one thing, but yeah, we've been praying for a beautiful little guy in our church who, who's five, just turned five, and he was born with um, a liver problem. And so it's been an ongoing journey in and out of hospital all the time, really challenging for his amazing parents who were just so tough and just really, they just really trusted God and we just been praying, praying and yeah, when we, during lockdown, um, I got to call her and I was like, how's he going? You know, we're just, we're just continuing to pray and, and she's like, well, he's on the list for like a liver transplant, which was really full on and you know, we don't know how that's going to go. and. 
And then we ended up touching base a couple of weeks later and she's like, we've just had a miracle. Like he got to see a geneticist who just said, let's just try something different. I think there's something else we can do. And pretty much instantly, all his symptoms went away. It was just a total God thing and just really rejoicing with this family because they've just been on such a journey and just God's so good. And I just, I don't know, I love it. Love those stories about how God reaches into families and really answers prayer. And I know many people praying for miracles and praying for God to do something. These stories should give you hope that that just stay faithful, stay on course, stay the way and expect God to do great things. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, one of my personal highlights this year is really, I suppose, our family. I hope you see family being extended. And so uh, starting this year, we um, have our Port Stephens family join us. Um, Give them a hand. That's uh, Chris and Tristan Clum, uh, the campus pastors there in Port Stephens. If you're driving that way over holidays, um, you'll see it as you go right down the road on the right-hand side there, heading into that beautiful area up there. And of course, they, um, we're so blessed to have um, received the, the, them into our family and um, Greg and Robin um, McEwen have done a brilliant job, 19 years there, um, driving that church, pioneering that church. And it's a great honor to pick up the um, next baton from them and go on to the next uh, season under the name Hope You See. So well done to you two for stepping up and taking that on. And um, so, yeah, what's, I mean, apart from that, um, apart from, you know, joining in to all of us crazy people here, what's been the highlight for both you, Chris and Tristan? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having us. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what an amazing family to be a part of. And, um, you know, we are the great holiday escape in Port Stephens. So <laughs> make sure you come and say hello. All are welcome um, in Port Stephens. So come up and say hello. It's a great, great place to come for holidays. But um, just a bit of a, bit of a plug for Port Stephens. <laughs> Minister for Tourism for Paul Stevens, <laughs> uh, Chris Klum. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it was it was an amazing journey, I suppose. We took the church on and then I think it was two weeks later, um, we're, we were online. Um, but it was amazing that in the in the process of that what we got to focus on that what we thought we were going to do as a church when we first um you know took on hope you see port stevens and actually what we did do was you know completely different and um it was absolutely incredible what god did in this season that um the the partnerships that we made with our community and you know one of the big initiatives within hope you see is meals of hope and you know we we hadn't really done a lot of of that in in the past and um a local um club called me up out of the blue one day and said hi how you doing um we're just making meals and we're wondering if if, if you need them and i said well you wouldn't believe it um we've actually just started a uh, a program at our church called uh, meals of hope and um over the over the next you know however many weeks they gave us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meals that we'll be able to you know build connection with the community and and be able to to bless our community and people in need um, with these meals and it's just been absolutely um an incredible blessing that you know what we thought was going to happen but what god did in the process of it was was just amazing so you know it was a, a big highlight for us what about you tristan yeah, well, one of the things we were praying for, well, before COVID 2.0, <laughs> was um, a children's pastor. We needed a children's leader in our um, our children's ministry. And it was just incredible. Like someone came to us during the midst of COVID and, and said, hey, look, I just feel really it's God's put it on my heart to lead the children's ministry. And it's been such a huge blessing to us. And she's done a fantastic job you know she's visited all the children um during covid she visited drove you know 
hours, I think, just to visit um, all their houses and give them gifts and deliver them craft packs. And it's just been fantastic to watch her grow into that. And the kids love her. I mean, we gave her the Nomi Award recently and the kids were so happy for her that she's only a little lady, but they all hugged her and they ran her and they gave her the giantest hugs. And it was just incredible. And the kids just embraced her. And it's just been so amazing watching her in that space, operating in her giftings. And um, yeah, the kids are loving it. The families are loving it. And we just, God is so good because he's just really just come through for us in that space. So that's been incredible. Yeah, wow. Well done. Yeah, great campus. And that church, I just believe, is really, God's going to do something special there and yes. really, um, really impact that community and that region, actually, which is a growing, growing area of inside New South Wales. Um, Nari, um, Peninsula. Um, what's been happening? What's the big testimony for you this year? Yes, well, same. You think, think there's so much and so many stories, and we just love and value every uh, story. But reflecting on the start of the year, a real dream came true for Hope You See Peninsula, and we're very excited. It's been um, um, a vision upon our heart for a long time to get into our local high school with a breakfast club. So, big shout out actually to all our GU youth leaders and our youth pastors because they have just done the most outstanding and exceptional job. And God is continuing to do something really special on the peninsula with our a partnership with the local high school. We continue to see youth, teenagers walk into our Friday night GU program and see salvations each week. But I remember sitting here this time last year and we all had been talking about the value of discipleship. And I know we went into this year with great intentionality to really focus on that. And another um, real highlight that I celebrate for myself was the joy and privilege of sitting around a table of young people, young men hungry to learn and girls, um, you know, 13 to 16 years of age at our Foundations of Faith Discipleship Nights, which we started this year. And just to see the um, mature mums and dads of the house just opening up the word, sharing their stories and testimony and all learning and growing together and a great place to ask questions. And we've continued to see those young people engage in brothers on a Monday night once a month. And even during lockdown, just a big shout out to all our life group leaders and our GU leaders because discipleship was still happening. Lots of walk one-on-one, lots of prayer down by the beach or the water, come to Peninsula, great place to have a holiday. (laughs) Um, But I just, yeah, I take my hat up to the community of faith has been, is alive and flourishing and we celebrate all that God's doing. It's incredible. Yeah, well done, well done. Um, Pastor Paul McCulloch or to his friends, we all call him Pastor Slim and that's a time for another story but um and you can ask him personally what, what that where all that comes from but what's been the highlight for you for 2021 yeah it's um it's been you know a great year and mine are probably a little un- unusual um one big highlight for me was at the start of the year we ran a um an old man's football life group a what old, old man's football life group old man's Football, football life, life group. group. Yeah, so you've got the Minister for Tourism here. <laughs> I'm the Minister for Sport and Recreation. <laughs> so, um, but I think that the reason that st- stood out for me was just the engagement of the guys. I would have their wives calling saying, I can't get him out to anything at night. He's always tired from work, but he so looks forward to this event. Awesome. And, um, you know, they were bringing along their work colleagues and neighbours that aren't, you know, normally from church and just the camaraderie around there and we would pray for one another. It was just a real, real highlight for me. But, you know, unfortunately, that, that group had to close down after a few months. So Is that had to close down? Is that because of the lockdown? No, no. Well, as you know, Mark, there were some strict conditions on this group. You had to be over 40 or over 90 kilos to be able to, to play. Oh, there was a weight limit. <laughs> yeah, there's a weight limit. And... Um, you know, one of the challenges, obviously, these guys are very, you know, they're, they're finely tuned athletes and play very intense football. Um, injuries got the better of us and we didn't have enough people to, to finish the season. But but the camaraderie was a real highlight. Oh, so there's room for backup reserves. There's room for lots of backups if they want to come. But uh, yeah, just those guys coming together, you know, it was, it's actually really quite powerful because there's a lot of areas of church life where where the, the men tend to struggle to sort of, you know, engage. And um, this was one where they really, they really, you know, grabbed it with both hands and it was a highlight. Another one for me was um, after lockdown, we were sharing video devotions online and sending it to our life group groups uh, every weekday and engaged a lot of the life group leaders in that process. And just the testimonies from that were 
incredible. I was actually surprised, you know, the amount of people that came back and said, you know, on my way to work, I look forward to listening to that. Um, you know, in my car, on the train, um, they set time aside in the day and it just seemed like every time someone would share a devotion, for someone it hit the exact spot, you know, for them where they needed. And so I was just really encouraged about the church coming together in that way, using their various gifts and what they were hearing from God to build up the body of Christ. It was wonderful. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. So Pastor Slim has a weight limit for his football team. A, a, a minimum a, weight limit. A minimum weight limit. Okay. Okay. That's a funny thought right there. Um, Leanne and Brad. Uh, Leanne, this is sort of your first sort of year, I suppose, now as the campus pastor at Charmhaven. Um, what's been the highlight for you? Yeah, well, it's actually a year ago that we were sitting on the couch and looking forward to this year. And there were two things that um, we saw for this year. And one of them was um, community, but also an extension table and really extending the table uh, into the community. And I'm, I just have loved seeing the opportunities we've had um, within community. So we've, we've had the COVID uh, testing centre here now. So we just get so many cars driving through our property. We've also got the recycling station continuing there. And our Meals of Hope have just been such a blessing to the community. On um, our Christmas party day back early in December, we honoured Christine and David Little who week in, week out, almost daily, have been in this house um, preparing bags of groceries. There's a team of, of ladies and some guys who've come in and they've made over 100 meals every week just going out to the community. And we've had people just coming in the door receiving food. So that's really exciting. And, and more recently, we just had a, a little trial ready for a big launch next year with Creative HQ. So, and again, opportunities for the community to come together. It's been so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Brad. Thank you, uh, Mark. We have loved, uh, because we've sort of come back to Charmhaven, renewing some uh, friendships, but have just loved uh, meeting a whole bunch of new people and hearing their stories. And that has just, for me, has been the highlight, as well as seeing people come to the table to bring uh, what, what they have their gifting there, taking their place uh, at the table and in the body and, and seeing people say yes to Jesus in whatever that looks like, whether it's it's on a Sunday or midweek or out in the community, wherever that is, that for me has just been very exciting and we're, we're cheering people on as they do that. Yeah, well done. Well done, guys. Well, one of the, again, I'm, I, I've got the opportunity to give another highlight um, because I, I've got the microphone, is um, one of the highlights for me has been this online platform. Um, it's been fantastic actually going around the campuses now that we're coming out of lockdown hearing the testimonies about people who really um, understood how God ministered to them via this this um, mechanism and again t not only themselves but then telling stories of, about their friends or their neighbors um, how they would then gather and watch the online service it's just amazing to see that and so we're really committed to this platform we might be out of lockdown we're definitely gathering and singing out loud our hearts out loud and and all of those things next week will be our uh, again our anointing service um, really ushering in 2022 and I just you know just on that thought alone I just was just really praying about it just saying I just I just believe that this moment that you would take is that you would rest um, over the season that you would also reflect on what God has spoken to you across this year but not only that but then you would allow the space I believe for the Holy Spirit to really um, you know to put fresh vision into yes. you for 2022 really and and in some cases that might be a refiring of things that you'd um, buried or, or that you'd put on the back in other cases that'll be brand new ideas this year I believe in many cases, in many ways across our nation, in economies, in life groups, in homes, in businesses, in education, I believe that this year will be a, a remarkable year of go forward, of, of going from strength to strength. I, that thought about pressed down, shaken yeah. together, overflowing. I love how the scripture says, into your lap. 
that's the translation I like to read. And, and I just thought that, again, I just want to sort of, I suppose, declare that over you, that you, rather than thinking about shrinking or bunkering, that you actually think about how can we expand? How can we go forward? How can we take new ground? Um, in many ways, maybe maybe this year is the year as you enter into it, we're only a few days away, where you go, I'm going to read the Bible, the whole Bible from front to back cover. There'll be times when you get behind and there'll be times when you get in front, but don't be put off by that. Just set yourself some big goals, some ideas that you've never done before and to set them in front of you. Allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on them and to um, really be a blessing to you across this year, 2022. So again, this platform has been a great testimony. Um, people you know, from all around the world, as, as well as all around our suburbs who are learning and engaging about what church is actually like um, and it's a great first step for them so uh, Steve and Jess it'd be great for you to also share with us today about what's been what's been great for you this year yeah absolutely we've got so many and we second and third all of your guys's responses but um, one of the things we've really uh, seen as a progression this year is just people finding their place and finding their their spot at the table and so um, throughout a challenging year we've seen people like Dan and Roger overhaul our production we've seen people step into meals of hope spaces we've seen our welcome place have more volunteers than ever before reaching more people ministering past even just that time slot to minister into people's lives um, and I think like you just said Checky, like it's the next the next step as people just find where um, where they're called and where they're, where there's a, a gap and a spot for them. So we're excited about that. Our youth ministry and discipling and Liz and the team have done so well. So um, I just can't wait for the, re the, the continuation of that. Yeah. I'm excited, Steve, because um, Steve uh, is going from being uh, bivocational in 2021 to now being full time at Hope You See. And I'm um, pretty excited about that. And he's going to lead the charge, um, helping um, coordinate, organize, and and take new ground in our in our hope local, all the local missions that we're endeavoured in. So I'm, I'm, I really I really believe that this is going to be an amazing year ahead for you personally. Yeah. Thanks for helping me retire from teaching. <laughs> which is a good profession, by the way. Um, we love school teachers, and that is a mission field unto itself. Um, and my, my highlight from the year has really been, um, we've, we talk about Meals of Hope all the time, and even reflecting our stories of hope with the online campus, that was just so amazing to hear people's stories. Um, but with our Meals of Hope, we've also been able to give out like thousands and thousands of meals, and we've just been astounded with our volunteers, and each week we would have so many people requesting need and people in our campus that saying there's someone that needs help can we help them and when there were these really big cook cook-offs that we would have there was lots of need and then when there wasn't as many meals around there was kind of like less need but whatever the need was it was always fulfilled um, and it just reminded me of that story in the Old Testament with Elisha and that widow that while the jars were being supplied the oil was flowing and you know whenever we're able to give what we're able to give, whatever the need is, God is always going to supply the need, isn't He? And I'm so grateful for our church that always said yes in whatever way, in their time, their energy, in their finances, in their driving around in their cars. Thank you, church, for everything that you've given. Thank you for supplying the need. And we just give praise to God for what He's doing in our community and what ripple effects that's happening as well. That's awesome. Yeah, amazing. But Jess, tell me one story about how what really, really hit you in your heart this year. With Meals of Hope or with, with anything? With anything. Well, I feel like this year I've really noticed how much we're living in modern day miracles. And I feel like there's things I'm like, we could write this it could be one of the stories in the Bible, you know, but, the, you know, John even wrote, you can't even write down everything that Jesus is doing because there's not enough books to contain it. Um, little Jensen Drake um, in our campus, he had this really horrible accident. And, and like your story, Beth, like it was just an absolute miracle of 
his spleen being fine and um, just going from strength to strength. I've seen other miracles in my family and um, yeah, just seeing these, I, I'm just calling them, I'm living in modern miracle times. Like it's just incredible seeing the way that Jesus is at work in people's lives. And, and Jensen's testimony when he's sitting in the hospital, the five-year-old boy, um, he's talking to the doctors really confidently saying, hey, God's healed me. And, and they started kind of going, well, could we help out a little bit as well? Like, <laughs> if God's done that, Jesus healed you, we, we might help you a little bit. So the faith of our kids is just beautiful. Yeah, our church has uh, got a strong kids program, a strong youth program, yeah. which secures the future yeah. legacy of, yeah. of the gospel amongst other churches for sure. Um, in our areas and we're just so proud of that and that we, again we we want to invest into them we want to help them so again even this uh, holiday break why don't you bless your youth leader bless your kids leader buy them a box of chocolates or or a dinner voucher whatever it is and just say well done thank you for being faithful uh, because that's a really important ministry aspect to our church well great to hear all the testimonies just some really um, we could be here for days talking about all the stories of this year. But I suppose I just want to, again, I think collectively be great for us to pray, to also um, declare the blessing over you today. Um, Boxing Day, whatever you do now, you're recovering from that big meal yesterday. <laughs> you're sitting on the lounge maybe watching the service. The cricket's about to start in a few hours. Um Maybe it's a rain out day, I don't know, but we're inside the building, we don't actually know. But again, I just, I just believe that this coming, I just can't say it enough, this coming season is just to expect big. Yeah. Just expect big. big. Big God, big dreams, big outcomes, and, and again, be in a position and a posture that you could actually um, enjoy God's blessing in your life. Amen? Yeah. So team... Why don't we, uh, Chris, why don't you kick us off just so there's a good, uh, Chris Clum, I should say, um, with the blessing. The blessing. Um, because you're going you're gonna to speak that out so clearly and we're going to come in right behind you. Come on. Are we ready, team? Let's do it. I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Bless your church. <laughs>